What if I told you that not all vertebrates have sex chromosomes and whether they are male or female is determined by another means? To find out, stay tuned with me and as we learn about TSD. Welcome to or welcome back to Anthraptile Colony and yes you heard and read correctly we're talking about TSD it is not a typo we're not talking about the disease related stuff we are talking about temperature dependent sex determination not a heck of a lot is known about TSD which is what I'm going to be calling it now because saying temperature dependent sex determination all the time is rather long and I often switch the two D's around with dependent and determined. So to avoid that, we're going to stick with TSD. But as I was saying, it's rather complicated and not much is known about it. So this video is very much just the basics or introductory knowledge or information to this amazing trait. But what is TSD? I'll tell you. TSD is where the sex of the animal, so whether the animal is male or female, depends on the temperature at which the animals are incubated at, or which the eggs of the animals are incubated at, rather than on the sex chromosomes. So taking us as humans, as for an example, whether we are male or female depends on the combination of our sex chromosomes. We have two types of sex chromosomes, X and Y chromosomes. If you have a XX chromosome pair, so two X chromosomes, then you are a female. Whereas if you have an X and a Y combined together or paired together, so one X, one Y, you are then male. That is for humans. And that is how most animals have their sex determined. But as I said, not all. Examples of such animals include vertebrates like crocodiles, turtles, and some lizards. But the trait does vary between the groups. There are two types of patterns that you find in TSD. And that is the pattern one, which has a single transition zone and pattern 2 which has two transition zones. Pattern 1 is made up of two sub patterns 1a and 1b and for the examples to explain each of these I'm going to be using 25 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit somewhere here to explain the thresholds or to explain the, co the concept. So looking at pattern 1a with a single threshold of 25 degrees Celsius or a single transition zone of 25 degrees Celsius. If the eggs are incubated below 25 degrees Celsius, the majority, if not all of the offspring will be male. Whereas if the eggs are incubated at temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius, then the majority, if not all of the offspring will be female. Then pattern 1B is the opposite. So if the eggs are incubated at a lower temperature, they will be female. Whereas if they are incubated at a higher temperature, then they will be male. The second type of pattern, as I mentioned earlier, has two transition zones. So let's use 25 and 30 degrees Celsius as the two transition zones. And this is where the extreme temperatures, so below 25 and above 30, result in the same sex. They'll be all female or all male, whereas then the middle zone, where between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius, will be the opposite sex. So if the extremes are produce all females, then that middle zone will produce all males. What's interesting is that mixed sex clutches occur more often in pattern 2 than they do in pattern 1. But across all patterns, hermaphroditic offspring are extremely rare, in fact, almost completely absent. Bearing in mind that as little as 1 degree Celsius is enough to have an impact on the sex of the offspring. So as you can see, this is something like a rather strange trait. And it is, but... They have found that in invertebrates, which have usually shorter lifespans, this can be quite helpful or it will increase the fitness of these individuals at different temperatures. But the advantage of TSD in reptiles is rather unknown. Because reptiles are so long lived, it doesn't make sense to have their fitness being increased at one or another temperature because they will experience multiple temperatures throughout their adult life. For argument's sake, a clutch of eggs is incubated at 23 degrees Celsius, quite a low temperature compared to the average over this one period. But then that happens to be an unusually low temperature, whereas every subsequent year of their life, the temperatures are then much higher as a whole, let's say 30 or 32 degrees Celsius. So how would that have an advantage to them? 
we don't know, yet they still have TSD, which makes it difficult to believe that this is the sole reason for having the TSD. A point that does back up this fitness hypothesis is that males in general are usually smaller than females, and that is because the quantity of females increases with size. So the bigger they are, the more babies they're able to have, or the more eggs they're able to lay. So in warm climates, when food is plentiful, it will make sense to have more females because they can then grow to larger sizes and produce more offspring. Whereas in the colder temperatures, resources are often more limited, and so more males are produced because they do not need as much resources because they do not need to produce the offspring. But that's just a theory, and that's the one we have so far. But as a whole, a definite explanation is still unknown. But luckily for us, research is still being conducted on this amazing trait, so I'm quite excited to see what the future holds. And to make sure you stay up to date with that, why not subscribe to this channel down below, as well as hit that notification bell. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. I really appreciate it, and it helps the channel out a lot. And for more great content, feel free to click this video here on screen now. And remember, it's never too late to learn, so I'll catch you in the next one.